Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So here's the second painting I was working on whilst I was working on the Aralia, which you have already seen. That's the painting on the left. That was my last video. This one is the Seeded Eucalyptus. And the steps are pretty much the same. It's the same approach. Uh, soft background, um, precision work on the leaves. I will also be shading with color pencils. Um, the only difference is really <laughs> the image. But there's a few things I want to talk about before I leave you with some music. The first one is about this brush. This is a number two round um, silver black velvet and it's made with natural bristles and it's super flexible. It's very soft. And I've noticed lately that I it, it's a little bit more difficult to control when you're doing precision work. I love it for details. I love it for um, if I want to have uneven lines and stuff like that. It's perfect. But if I need to have clean edges, I think I could benefit for with from <laughs> for with from a brush that has stiffer bristles, maybe a synthetic brush. So I will be changing my method um, and I'll be trying out some brushes and I'll let you know when I find the one that I really like. A couple more things that I want to point out, things that I wish I'd done differently. One, I wish I'd switched to a bigger brush <laughs> for painting this area. This is a fairly large area and I'm still using that number two round. Why? I don't know. Um, momentary lapse of sanity. I have no idea. Maybe I was just too comfortable with it in my hands. The problem with this is that because the brush does not contain a lot of liquids, you have to reload your brush often. But also when you come back to paint where you've stopped, it's already started drying. So it created these uneven batches of color and I'm gonna be working really, really hard to even everything out. Um, in the end though, it doesn't really matter because most of it is uh, covered with patterns. But at the time, I wasn't sure where I was going with the patterning anyway. So uh, the other thing too I wish I'd done was to switch, uh, sorry, to sketch in the patterns before, instead of just like adding it with the brush. Uh, because it's always more difficult, especially like I've explained before with that small, smooth, soft brush, it's very difficult to get precision. So those are the two things that if I were to redo this painting, I would sketch in or pencil in the patterns and use a bigger brush. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. The rest is the same as the other painting that you've seen, the, uh, the previous video. So I will be linking that video in the description so you can refer to it if you have any questions. And I'll come back at the end.
I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a, a quite a big bubble of water on the ferrule of my brush close to the bristles and I did not notice it. It's something that I'm usually very mindful of. If that drop would have fallen on that red space and I hadn't seen it, it would have created um, a big spot, like a big lighter spot. So this is something to be mindful of when you're painting. It's just a matter of noticing it and uh, removing that drop with either uh, tissue or towel or something like that, but uh, those big drops can get you in trouble. <laughs> Another thing that I'm going to be purchasing or looking for is a brush that has a fairly rounded tip, uh, a round round, <laughs> because this one has um, kind of like an uneven uh, point. It's also rather pointy, so when you're trying to make dots like this, it's not the right brush. So again, another struggle. I this was a this was a tough one. This painting was um, a labor of patience. There's a few details that I would probably correct um, before I actually print my stickers. Like maybe make those dots a little bit rounder. Um, also, the patterning is not even, and again, I've explained before that I did not sketch them in. The other reason why they weren't that successful was, or I wasn't as precise as I wanted to be, is because of the uh, filming setup I had at the time. I could not really move my board uh, freely, so it was very difficult. My The angle at which I was attacking those, um, those semi-ovals or semi-circles, um, was a little bit awkward for me so I still like it though I'm not complaining I'm just explaining <laughs>
I do like the paintings, even though there are things that I wish I had done differently. I think the look of, especially the vases, not so much the leaves, because they're quite detailed and they were shaded and all that, but the vases, the patterning is a little bit, has a little bit of that naive look. Yeah, naive. Let's go with that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's kind of like, it looks like as if it's done on purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's my story. Okay. Now, <laughs> all jokes aside, I really do love the paintings. Um, and again, whenever I do something, I always discover new ways to do things. And that's what progress is all about. So that's it. I want to ask you if you have any uh, topics you want me to tackle uh, specifically in watercolor, a specific topic or a specific subject that you want me to touch on. Uh, leave them in the comments below. I will be, like I said, doing a series on smaller videos that are uh, relating to one specific idea or technique and or information kind of like a watercolor 101 kind of thing like for example um how do you choose your brush or what's a good basic tool if you're a beginner in watercolor and you don't know which brushes to uh, buy and stuff like that so that'll be coming up i thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below i want to say a big thank you to my awesome patrons over at patreon who are helping uh, fund this channel because without them i would not be able to do videos for free so thank you so much everyone and i will see you soon